Okay, uh, apparently this was less stupid than I thought because you guys really liked it, which is cool because I flip and love making creatures. You guys were so heckin' supportive, so thank you so much. All right, to recap, I will be rolling on two different tables, one with Pokemon, the other with D&D monsters, and merging the two together. Please note that these stats for the resulting monstrosities can be found in the description below. All right, I'm Jazz. Let's start rolling. First roll will be... C 16. That's... Cubone. Yeah, Cubone. Oh. All right. Oh, starting off with like potential cute. Uh, the next one is six. Oh, R really? <laughs> really? Okay. Actually, wait. I think I know which one this is because one of my players actually claimed that number. <laughs> so this one goes out to you. Okay. Wh which one is it? Uh, Kawaddle. Yes. Okay. Oh snap, we actually might have something cute here. Let's get started. So on the one hand, we have Cubone, an orphaned Pokemon wearing the skull of its dead mother, whose cries echo across the cave walls in the hopes of staving off of its irreparable loneliness. On the other, we have Coatl, a lower-level celestial guardian of knowledge and secrets, and one of the few celestials that are actually mortal. One of the binding tenets of the Kawaddle's life is a divine task that they must enact, even if the deity's demand exceeds their own lifespan. If that is the case, herein is the unexplored territory of the tiny Kawaddling. With a few pricks of its egg tooth, the small winged serpent was free. It waited expectantly for its divine insight to come, or to be given purpose. But its only gift was silence. Its mother coiled limply around the nest, expended all of her essence before her right could be passed down, and the quarreling was left aimless in a dangerous world. Being small, easy targets for hungry fiends, orphaned quarrelings used their mother's skull as a dramatic, fear-evoking display, using flashing eye spots at the base of its wings. Newly hatched quadlings are typically a dull brown to assist in camouflage and will brighten over several centuries. These young divine serpents will actively seek out companionship with good-natured individuals and make excellent familiars for celestial warlocks. Quadlings hope that with their partnership, they will finally find the right path toward their righteous purpose. Alright, uh, not a bad start, really, um, but things can always go horribly wrong, <laughs> so, second roll. Right, uh, 80, uh, Porygon, okay, Porygon, Porygon thrown into the blender with a, let's see, 43, a no, ooh, 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 oh jeez, okay, well there's, there's a look, um, let's work with this. <laughs> This time we've got two distinctly different creatures here. Uh, Porygon is an artificial Pokemon born from the virtual space from written code. Then you have Anol, which is a brutal race of hyena folk that fed on the scraps of the chaotic aftermath of the dark god Inogu. Uh, you know, two very easy to fit together creatures. Um, so I do offer up the devilish trickster, the wild mange. In the wake of the Spell Plague, where the weave of magic was all but snuffed out, there lingered pockets of destructive wild magic that tainted the lands and creatures like a radioactive poison. Born from this toxic and twisted magic, the Wild Mange is a creature torn between the plains clawing its way through the realms through aberrant bursts of teleportation magic. It thirsts for stable magic to tether it to the material plane and will feed on the spell slots of its victims. Symptoms of a wild mage incursion include wayward objects glitching into walls as well as nearby creatures appearing to lag or repeat actions in real time. Spellcasters that manage to escape the jaws of a hungry wild mage may find their spells tainted by wild magic. 
If your faithful wizard received multiple lacerations from this glitch fiend, they might experience subtle cravings for magic that progress into fits of madness. And finally, a full metamorphosis. The Curse of the Wild Mange is one of the most dangerous forms of lycanthropy, which can best be surmised as a teleporting glitch wolf that explodes with a deadly strobing light. Best of luck, adventurers. Come your next long rest. On to our third roll. Let's see uh, what the table of horrifying hybrids uh, gives us this time. Uh, 76? Uh, that's, that's, an, uh, that's an onyx. Yes. Okay, best rock boy is crossed with something cool, maybe. 33? That, um, that's Chimera! Now this has some serious TPK material going on. <laughs> Alright, I'm sorry in advance for any players that have to deal with this. In one corner, a titanic rock snake bores new tunnels with a spinning jagged body and feeds on rare minerals. And in the other, a twisted amalgam of beasts birthed to satiate the boredom of a chaos god. Seems cruel to fuse something to an already malformed fusion, but uh, here we stand at the titanic foot of the Gargolum. This gargantuan construct was formed from a massive menagerie of petrified creatures from an avid collector. Callous beholders or cruel archmages may find a sickening new purpose for their growing mountain of terrified sculptures and turn their amassing material into a powerful new tool to keep adventurers from straying into their lair. Nothing brings a villain's abode together like a walking trophy of the party's mistakes. The gargolem waits motionless for its prey and appears to all the world as a garden of large statues and broken busts until its tremor sense detects the presence of footsteps approaching and a storm of weaving stone it assembles into a horrifying mass of frozen visages of its master's conquests. A broken symphony of petrified allies clattering in unison and ready to add you to the pile. A unique trait of the brawling Gargolem is the ability to dissemble at will, showering and crushing the party in an avalanche of stone beneath it. This insidious construct can use this ability to feign death to surprise trespassers from below. Rising rapidly upward, these golems can gather and entrap creatures in a walking stone prison to await their masters. Okay, no whammies, fourth roll, uh, 71, bayonet! Okay, this is, tis the season to be scary. Okay, then we have, uh, 74, which is, ochre flippin' jelly. I can rest happy now, we got news, we got, we got news guys, okay, I'm so happy. <laughs> okay, uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this, but I'll figure it out. Okay, let's go. Oh, Bayonet. <laughs> a terrifying trickster puppet that is animated by pure hatred and malice. This nightmare goes nicely with a fine dish of ochre jelly. Now this isn't your average cup of jello unless, uh, your jello moves, divides, and tastes like 1d6 acid damage. Uh, good on you for having good taste in dessert monsters. Regardless, I bestow upon you the terror of the marionette. Slinking upon the ceilings of the Underdark is an ooze of frightening intelligence that enjoys playing with its meal. Unlike most oozes, the Marionette is careful to expel and clean the weaponry and treasure of its victims. It forms a neat and tantalizing pile of wealth beneath its slithering mask to tempt in more warm bodies. Using thin cords of slime that descend from above, it sets a trap for careless creatures that blunder into its lair. The sticky tendrils latch onto the limbs of its prey, and with a telekinetic shock, the marionette forges a new plaything to puppeteer for a while. If the ooze fails to commandeer a suitable live puppet, it will instead use a few of its expired models to deal with the unruly guests. One of the more unsettling features of the marionette's lair is the leftover meals it binds to the ceiling. 
It puts these skeletal husks to quick use, orchestrating their movements to strike adventurers in a macabre dance. Though at first glance they may seem impossible to reason with, marionettes can be bribed with interesting or exotic live creatures. However, their hedonistic streak may mean their alliances are rather dubious. Never shake on a marionette's word, lest you become another one of its many puppets. Okay, final roll, guys. Um, alright, rolling 53. Okay, uh, that's unknown. Um, yeah, okay. It's okay, it's an okay Pokemon. Has cool lore. Not bad. Mixed with 92. Why? <laughs> but why, though? No. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this. Okay, then. <laughs> Unknown is a bizarre Pokemon. They have a childlike and playful curiosity for humans. When they gather in great numbers, they even have the power to bend reality to the will of their companion and open up portals to other worlds. A succubus often has more dastardly plans for their potential partners and will seduce their victims to an early grave often through their dreams. So this is quite the paradoxical mashup, but nevertheless, I present the Igning Mirror. Once a powerful but now banished archfiend, the Igning Mirror's name and face has been lost to time. A husk of its former self, this oddly gentle aberration hungers for company and will form strong maternal connections with the unlikeliest of people. The Enigmirror's fractured mind is plagued by curiosity and seeks to better understand the vexing intricacies of sentient creatures. It wishes to love, but has a poor grasp of how best to show it. Often misunderstanding what things can and cannot speak, the Enigmirror often takes the guise of an ordinary object or animal and will assail the party with endless questions. If the adventurer's patience holds strong enough, the Enigmirror will adopt the party, the object and animal it once inhabited will suddenly combust, and she will visit them in their dreams. Much like a doting grandmother, the Enigmirror will happily spoil the party with grand gestures. However, her magical gifts never seem to work as intended. An adventurer's request for a mass teleportation may indeed end poorly when the Enigmirror wasn't expecting mortals to be so delicate. What are you? I'd like to especially thank all my patrons and Kofi donors that support me in doing what I love. Uh, it. It really baffles me because I never thought I'd get this far doing this, and you've all been so great. Uh, even though I might not have the time necessarily to uh, reply to all of you, I do read your comments and they mean a lot to me, so thank you. Uh, I, I'm not really sure where I'm gonna go with this fusion series, but I'm experimenting and uh, figuring it out is the fun part. So uh, I hope you can stick around to see where this goes. Alright, see you next time. Bye.